Um, let's uh, turn our Bibles to Second Chronicles chapter 16 and read verse 8. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and read verse 8. I'm just reading it. Were not the Cushites and Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. I'm just reading these words again. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. A portion of that verse I'm reading. But not the Cushites and Libyans, a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen. Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. Today we will try to take instructions from Hane and I, the prophet, and from what he had said to King Asa, the king of Judah at the time. So there are two important things that we are looking at. First, we will look at uh, Hanani. And second, we will look at what he had told the king of Judah by name King Asa. First of all, Hanani is referred as a seer in the Bible. If we read verse 7, we would understand that. In verse 7, it's recorded like this. Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him. In verse 10 also, Hanani is second time recorded as the seer. Verse 10, we see Hanani referred as a seer. Asa was angry with the seer. Seer is the one who foretells things to happen. Generally, the word seer and also prophet are interchangeably used. But some interpret to say that prophet does a kind of a holistic ministry. He leads people, he corrects them, he does many things. But seer is the one generally who foretells the things to happen. But at times, he also takes the message, people that God wanted to receive a message, and he tells them in the way that God wanted him to tell. And in his telling, he also would tell about the future events, what would happen in future. So that's what a seer is. Hanani, Hanani, uh, or Hanani, he was referred, or he is referred in the Bible as the seer. But for Second Chronicles chapter 16, we will never read about him anywhere in the Bible. Only here, in this particular context, the name of Hanani is mentioned. Though it's not mentioned elsewhere, only it's mentioned very briefly here in this particular context. During the time of King Asa, King of Judah, it had a profound influence. In the sense, he brought God's word very clearly, very transparently. So we do not exactly know how long he, did he live. How long did he minister God's word? But we have a brief recording, a brief recording of his ministry only in this particular context. From that, what do we understand? What lesson can we take? We do not know how long we live. Our life is very short. Already many years have passed by. And we do not know how many years we would live on this face of the earth. But if we take our life seriously, and if we life, live a life that is pleasing to God, I think he, that will be a fulfilling life, an impactful life. So God is exhorting us from this brief mention about uh, the ministry of Hannah and I in Second Chronicles chapter 16. He is speaking to us that we also need to live a fulfilling and impactful life, a life that is pleasing to God. A life that influences others in whatever way that we are able to influence. I mean, the positive influence that we can bring forth. The second important thing that we know about this seer, 
and the NI is that he was a prophet of the Lord. How do we know that he was a prophet of the Lord? There are at least two occasions in the Bible where we get this kind of an understanding. In verse 8, it is recorded like this. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8. He was talking to King Esther. He said, the Lord delivered you. When you relied on the Lord, the Lord delivered you. He was very, very crystal clear in his statement. The Lord was the one who delivered you. That's what he was saying. Another profound statement he made, probably we will think a little bit about it later. He said in uh, verse 8, the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth. There are a few other things also he mentioned. At least these two things, they stand out. The Lord was the one who delivered you. The eyes of the Lord, they range throughout the earth. These are the profound statements that he gave about God, God of Israel, the God whom we have believed, the God whom, in whom we have hope of eternal life, the God who forgave our sins, the God who became our heavenly father. You know, he is talking about that God, the God of Israel. He was the one who delivered you. His eyes, they range throughout the earth. That's what he said. So from this, what do we understand? What's the takeaway? Today, we may not have such prophets, prophets of that kind, who all the time foretell the events. There are many prophets who interpret God's word, make it simple, make it understandable, reveal the meaning of it, reveal the mysteries of God's word, but there may not be many people who would foretell. But yet, God's word is with us. God's word is like a mirror. Often when we visit God's word, it speaks to us. It shows our faults. It shows our mistakes. It shows our wrongdoings. It shows our sinful life. It shows our faults. It shows our status. Status that we are in. So that's why there is every need for us to go to God's word. And God's word corrects us. God's word, God's word encourages us. God's word chates us. God's, if we only have sensitive ears to listen to what is God, God is saying to us through his word, we will be richly benefited. So that's why, as he was a prophet of the Lord, there is God's word available to us. And it's available in so many languages. It's available in our tongue, in most cases. It's available in a language that is easy and lucid to understand. But the pity is that often we don't visit God's word. Even if we read it, it is a kind of a formality, you know. We don't really uh, study God's word. We don't really take time to uh, listen to what God is saying through his word to us. Actually, God can guide us. God can reveal many things to us. The third thing about Hannah, Hannah and I is that he went to the king. The king did not invite him. On behalf of God, he visited the king. He went to the king. Actually, he went with a purpose. It was a tough job that was entrusted to him because he was supposed to tell certain things that would not be palatable to the king. But he had to do that. He had to tell that. He had to tell whatever God wanted him to tell. Even though the telling was and he told whatever God wanted him to tell the king. Sometimes, you know, how do we uh, what lesson do we take, it, take from it? Sometimes, we don't really go to God to reveal his plans for our lives. But God out of mercy, out of goodness, out of compassion, God having the desire for our welfare, and our spiritual well-being, he would many times be gracious enough to reveal things to us, to pass on instructions to us, to reveal his plans to us, to reveal his expectations to us. Sometimes through strange circumstances, he would reveal his mind to us. We would never have, it, have expected that. I think it was Philip Yancey who wrote, Finding God in Unknown Places. And uh, sometimes we find God's mind 
we understand it through strange circumstances. God is the one who creates such circumstances for us that we would understand his mind. How gracious God is. Here in this case, God was really gracious towards King Asa. He wanted King Asa to know certain things. In fact, God wanted him to repent of his mistake and then get back to him. Had he really done that, his future would have been very, very different. And with that intention, God sent Hanani King Asa. Though that job was not so easy for Hanani, he had to communicate or convey the message as it was to be given to King Asa. So this is a profound thought that God in strange circumstances would reveal his mind, reveal his will to us. We would not have planned certain things, but God had planned certain things. And if we really intently go to him with expectation, God would be happy to reveal his mind to us also. So these are three important things that we learn from the very person of Hanani. Hanani the seer, Hanani the prophet during the time of King Asa, the king of Judah. We would also learn three important things in the light of which we may examine our lives. Three important, important things in the light of what he communicated to King Asa, what he said to him. Number one, he reminded King about the past. Hanani reminded King Asa about what had happened in the past in his own life or in the life of Israel. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 8 again. I'm reading it. Were not the Cushites and Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. Actually, if we read the previous two chapters of Second Chronicles, we would understand as to what kind of situation that Esau was in. He was afraid of the huge army that came against him. The Cubans and Libyans together, they went against him. In the previous chapter, only Kuchai's name is mentioned, but here in chapter 16, even it, it mentions that even Libyans also had joined them. When they went in, uh, went against him, they were in a big number. They were uh, equipped with weaponry. They had chariots, they were horsemen, and he and his army were not a match at all with his enemy army. At that time, he humbled himself, King Gaza relied on the Lord, and the Lord intervened, intervened. The Lord delivered him from such a huge army, a vast army, well equipped. They had this advanced technology of having chariots also, so he was not at all a match for him. But yet, God, but God, God of Israel intervened and he gave him victory. But King Asa had forgotten that. The context is that when the Israelite king, Baesha, he was building Ramah, a city on the border, he was preparing a ground to wage a war against King Asa. King Asa was able to sense it. Already there was a treaty between King of Aram, Ben Hadad, and King of Israel, Baesha. So what he did was that he approached King of Aram, Ben Hadad, and he said, You break the treaty with King of Israel, I'm going to give you silver and gold, and then you make a treaty with me. Let us ally with each other. And if that is done, I'm going to give all these things to you. And you know what he did? He took gold and silver from his own treasury, personal treasury, and he gave it in huge amounts. And he even went to the extent of taking gold and silver from the temple, and he gave it to this heathen king, King of Aram. And King of Aram broke ties with King of Israel, and he supported him. For the sake of this, for the sake of winning a victory over King of Israel, this King of Judah, King Asa, he approached a heathen king. He forgot about what God had done in his life previously. That's what Hanani is reminding about. 
he told that you forgot about the past. In the past, how did God give victory to you? When you relied on him, he favored you, he intervened, he gave a victory against the huge army with horsemen and chariots. That's what he did. He revealed God smiling. He reminded him about the past. Some, many times, we also would have got victories in our spiritual life, victories over different kinds of temptations. We would have tasted God's goodness, faithfulness, as to how God favored us, you know. Often, we forget the past events, and then when we face another situation, we succumb to it. We fall prey to the temptation. We forget about past victories. We forget about past goodness of the Lord. If only we remind ourselves about how God, how good God was, how real God was in our life, how many miracles he did in our lives, how wonderfully he got involved in our affair, how he redeemed us and released us from the clutches of the enemy. Actually, we would go uh, from one echelon to uh, the higher echelon. But often, we are just like King Esa. We forget what God had done in our life. That's why we fall prey to temptations. We go worldly. We yield ourselves to the temptations. of Satan. So the words of Anani to King Esa also tell us that we need to think about what God had done in our lives in the previous stages, how God came to rescue us, redeem us from the clutches of the how God even would have worked wonders, whether it's in the financial front or in the family front or in the professional front or in the church front, God would have done wonders. If only we remember them and realize that it was God and his goodness which were helpful to us, you know, we would go forward, move forward. We would press on in our spirit. Second important thing about Hannah and I was that he rebuked about the present situation of King Asa. Already, the context is clearly mentioned. When Israelite king was trying to wage a war against him, King Asa, he relied on a human person, a human individual. He relied on a heathen king, and he even went to the extent of giving his own silver and gold, and even silver and gold from the temple, huge quantities, just to gain help from a human individual. And uh, here, Hanani's job was really, really critical. And he rebuked him. He said, instead of trusting in the Lord, you relied on the king of Aram. There he pointed out two things. And he went to the extent of saying that you did a foolish thing. Uh, is it easy for anybody to go and tell the king that you did a foolish thing. That was a very, very tough thing. That would have been a tough thing for Han and I. But he did it. He, maybe God was not happy with what King Esau was doing. Instead of relying on the Lord, he was relying on a human being, the two, a heathen king, and the two to wage a war against his own brother kind, uh, the king of Israel. So he wasn't careful in his action. He forgot about what God had done in his life. Hannah and I, he told him that you did a foolish thing. Uh, so that's how he rebuked him. And he foretold something. When he said you did a foolish thing, foolish thing, he said, you are going to be at war continually through your life. That was the thing that he Literally later, he didn't have peaceful life. More than having wars against enemy, he had a severe disease in his own body which tormented him with trouble till the end of his life. At least at that time, he should have gone to God. Since we are not focusing more on King Esa, now we are delving deeper into the response of King Esa. But briefly, if we have to look at the response of King Esa, he did not repent. What was the problem? Even though King Hanani rebuked him, he still did not repent. Here, the third important thing 
is that he revealed the future. He said, from now on, you will be at war. And then I revealed him about how his future would be. He told in crystal clear terms. But Gesa did not repent. Only had he repented, the whole thing would have been very, very different. And uh, while revealing, um, while uh, talking about the kind of punishment that would befall on him, he revealed some other thing also that we see in Second Chronicles chapter 16, uh, verse uh, 8 or 9 only. Um, because you relied on the king of Aram and not on the Lord, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. I think it is found in verse 7. Because you relied on the king of Aram, not on the Lord, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. He was revealing another truth. If only he had relied on him, probably he would have got a victory over Israel and even he would have had an upper hand over King of Aram. It would have been like two birds at one shot. But he missed a golden opportunity. King of Aram would have subdued to him. Now, in fact, he subdued to King of Aram. That's why he gave gold and silver to him. He would have prostrated before him. He would have humbled himself before him. Actually, contrary would have been true in his life where he would have had the upper hand over not only king of Israel, but also king of Aram, had he relied on the Lord. So Hanani was revealing another truth to him. He told him, he rebuked him. First of all, he reminded him about the past, about how God had delivered him from the huge army of Kuhnites and Libyans. Number two, in crystal clear terms, he rebuked him. Number three, uh, he foretold about what would happen to him in future. He would be at war through the rest of his life. And he revealed another interesting thing is that, interesting thing, that he lost a golden opportunity. Maybe God had intended that. That particular situation, the king of Israel was trying to wage a war against him by fortifying the city of Rema. And since king of Aram also was a friend to him. Both of them would join together and come and then God would give, would give victory to him and then he would have two people under his subjection. He would have easily subdued them. He lost that golden opportunity. Sometimes by disobeying God, by not heeding to God's instruction, uh, we make mistakes. Sometimes after making mistakes also, we would quote Romans chapter 8, verse 28. All things were called for good for those. Actually, we forget the important clause there. For those who, who love God. You know? And uh, uh, if we love God, if we fulfill God's will, you know, then things would work out for good. Even if we go through difficult situations, tough situations, situations like going through fire, you know, they would turn out to be good, provided we are on God's side. Sometimes we are on the wrong side, but quote this verse and then console ourselves. That's wrong. That's why we don't get any benefit. And probably uh, King Esau was also in And uh, in the whole episode, while encountering King Esau, Han and I made a profound statement. That's there in verse 9 of chapter 16 in second reading it. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. I'll read again. The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Maybe by seeing uh, the Israelite king trying to wage a war against him, he was weakened. But if he had relied on the Lord, God would have stayed. In the past, he did like that. He trusted the Lord. He knew that he was not a match to Cochites and Libyans who uh, came against him. That's why he relied on the Lord. And God strengthened him. God intervened. And uh, 
God was the one actually who caused victory to him. God defeated the enemy. Same thing could happen to us also, provided we rely on the Lord. David in Psalm 118 also says that he would not trust human being, but rather he would trust the Lord in all his circumstances. When he was running like a bird, a fleeing bird, bird fleeing from a hunter, no? it goes from place to place and then hunter chases it. Paul was chasing him. He had such situations where, where he was at, at the point of death and life. But yet, he did not rely on human being, but he relied on God. God was the one who was a refuge to him. God helped him. God brought him to the kingdom, made him the king. He was like a shepherd. And uh, having experienced it, often he says that God was his refuge, not human being. He did not trust in horses. He did not trust in men. That's what we also need to do. There would definitely be areas where we are weak, spiritual areas, where we are vulnerable, highly vulnerable to certain temptations. There would be situations where we have family problems. We have problems at workplace. We may have other different kinds of health issues. Maybe we will be in different vulnerable situations. In the case of King Asa, God allowed a disease to be full. That time, he should have turned to God. But he relied on doctors. He relied on physicians. He did not turn to God. We also do that. Medicines are good. God gave wisdom to doctors. God gave a lot of advanced technology. All these facilities, advanced technologies are because of what God is doing in human life. But if we totally depend, depend on only them, I think we are the loser. We can't see God's wonderful works in our life. But while taking the help from doctors and the facilities that are there around us, if our focus, primary focus, primary relying is on God, we would experience God, God's wonder working. God would strengthen us in our big areas when we are vulnerable. Any, any, any believer will also have some areas where he is very vulnerable, he is very weak. Well, he's speaking him. But we can seek strength from the Lord. Hanani, he was a seer. About him, mentioned only in one context, the ministry was very impactful in the sense he made the matters crystal clear. Did it bring a positive effect? No, it did not bring positive effect because of the adamant attitude of King Gesa. You know what, what did King Gesa do to him? In verse 10, we see that King Gesa imprisoned him because he blew up against him. And not only that, he appraised to some other people also. I was guessing who the, those people would be. Probably those who were in step with Anani, they would have been oppressed. Those who tried to correct him, they would have been oppressed. So he imprisoned Prophet Anani and oppressed some other people. So Anani was willing to go to prison rather than he communicated clearly what God wanted him to tell. And he even described the decision of the king as a foolish decision. You did a foolish thing, he said. He did not budge. He did not mince matters. He was a seer. Very brief mention. He is there in the Bible. But yet, uh, it was great. And our life also is short. Let's also live a life that is worthy of our calling. And uh, let us be servants of the Lord. Even though we don't have prophets of that kind of this juncture in our life lifetime, we have God's word with us. We have ministers of God's word. Thousands and thousands. If you open the internet, we can hear God's message from just, you know. And God speaks to us even when we visit God's word. We did study it, meditate on it. God speaks to us. God speaks to us. He will his plans also. So he was just here. His 
about him is very, very briefly mentioned in the Bible, but uh, he did a mighty ministry. And, um, and the second thing that we saw is that uh, he was a prophet of the Lord. And the uh, third thing is that he came into the king without fear. He just fulfilled his job. And uh, God, in his mercy, would give opportunities for us to repent of our mistakes and turn to him. In this case, God sent him. It was not Asa who pleaded with the Lord. It was not Asa who inquired of the Lord as to what he should do and on what decisions he should make. But sometimes it strangely creates situations where we will learn many lessons. We should be really thankful. But what he said to King Asa, we looked at three things. He reminded the past where he talked about how King Asa relied on the Lord and God to give him this work. He rebuked him very clearly, saying that you did a foolish thing and you are going to have uh, going to be at war through your life. And uh, he also talked about God and uh, he made a profound statement that God's eyes range throughout the earth and he revealed his future, revealed future. From now on, you will be at war. And uh, so he, he fulfilled his response that way. Those are the three things that we looked at. He uh, uh, reminded the past, rebuked the, the present situation, rebuked the king, and revealed the future. I think if we live a short life on this case, that to fulfill the responsibility that God has given to us, life will be fruitful. Whether we go through difficult situations or not, it doesn't matter. We will have a full and the benefits will spill over to others. We will be a source of blessing to many people. May God use us in this world in our lifetime as God used Han and I. May the Lord bless these thoughts.